Texas Instruments is a designer and manufacturer of singles. Okay, let's get into the financial performance. The net income margin has been particularly strong and at more the and at more the double the industry average, which varies about 18%. The margin is of course supported by good cost control. Cost has really been raining in 2020. Costs have been declining, mainly due to the declining focus and slowing revenue and uh, net income. As you can see, revenue only increases by 1%, net income by 5%. So the declining cost is basically to save margins and save profitability. At the same time, that is a bit worrying, considering one might mean you are lagging behind your competitors. You know? Could mean a little bit of um, market share. So R and D as a percentage of revenue below the industry average, which is about twenty percent. R and D is about twenty percent. Now this matrix is stable. Now R and D has been stable over the past few years, but it's a bit worrying considering you know text instruments. Is experiencing a bit of a slowdown in the top and bottom end of growth in revenue and growth in income. So you'd expect them to you know, increase you know, spending in RD a bit, you know, in order not to lose innovative ground to competitors. Growth in revenue, we talked about it, it's pretty mediocre. Below the industry average, industry average is about 8%. The average over the past few years is about about 1%. Now, this, of course, this lackluster growth, you know, does indicate a few things. Number one, the loss in market share, the impact of COVID, which just made things worse. But revenues have been slowing down even pre-COVID. So, huh. No, but it is a bit worrying. It is a bit worrying. However, you know, profitability has been protected, but the slowdown in revenue and net income is, is a bit worrying. Uh, but return on equity is far above the industry average. The industry average is about 26%. The average for this instrument is 8%. So, very good. I like the efficient use of uh, equity. To achieve returns on operations, so very very good. Now, ultimately, the performance of these instruments is decent. These instruments as a solid, you know, above average margin, but the margins they remain good, mainly due to proper cost control as well as reduction in spending, rather than growth in revenue. But these instruments is a well-run company. I mean, it's, it's achieving. Massive, massive returns on equity. It's a good company, but that is worrying. It really does. Okay, but financial position, current ratio, incredibly good. Way, way, way above the industry average of 3.37. Indicates a very liquid, less risky balance sheet. Asset test ratio, also way, way above industry average. Industry average is about 1.88. It's a very pleasing indicator. Again, highlights the quantity is very, very liquid with little um, liquidity risk. So both um, indicators highlight a very attractive balance sheet full of liquidity. Both ratios have been improving, indicating the instrument's liquidity has been growing from strength to strength. Now, the good liquidity um, can also be supported by the over $3.1 billion in cash. Inventory days. They've underperformed the industry average of 101 days. Fair sign, but considering you know other liquidity measures, not too worrying. Um, so the, considering other liquidity measures, they do paint a strong balance sheet, even though the inventory days are below the industry average, but an additional liquidity risk. Uh, the instrument might hold inventory, well it does hold inventory for far too long, and the industry has 
average for as long as it should. But the overall liquidity risk is low, and considering that the costs have been decreased, it does not appear that you know holding on this in between is really eating into margin. So the debt to equity is well below the industry average of around 26 percent. So tax instruments is not highly yet not compared to the industry. It's not does not have you know increased a considerable amount of increased financial risk. So overall a good balance sheet. Cash position. The cash margin is very good. It's above the industry average of 32%. So very, very good. Now it has decreased slightly in 2020, but it still outperformed the industry by quite a lot. So the cash uh, from operations margin shows me an entity that can convert its operations into cash and that can generate cash from its operations and that can convert revenue into cash. So 42% so in 2020 of revenue is converted into cash. Very, very good. Not, not bad. Now, the sufficient cash flow margin is in line with the industry average of 0.84, so it's performing in line with its peers. Now, most of the cash that Texas Instruments generates goes into paying dividends. And the dividend yield is way above the uh, market returns or the average industry returns about 46% way above it so paying it's providing shareholders with above industry average um, shareholder returns it is good considering you know it does generate way above industry average cash margin very very good however you know in planning revenue a bit worrying to me and now, this shows me a company that's losing uh, market share. The PE, the um, price to earnings ratio, very cheap, you know, considering the industry average is just above 40, trading at almost 28. Very cheap. But, you know, there's a reason for that cheapness. You know, falling behind its competitors a bit. Giving me good, you know, giving me, it, it is achieving good ROE. It has a strong stable balance sheet, strong margins, but you know, one question is why it needs to spend 97% um, of its ca available cash in the form of dividends when we can probably half that and spend in line with industry average and do something about these um, really poor top and bottom line numbers, you know, do something about losing market share. So overall, things instrument it's a good company, but not for me considering there's too much competition risk that this company faces.